Kia ora mai anō. It's one of Hollywood's oldest mysteries with a Māori twist. Screen goddess Meryl Oberon was just as famous as legends such as Marilyn Monroe and Elizabeth Taylor. But did she hide her Māori and Indian culture to succeed in Hollywood? If you had any decent feelings, you'd insist on turning out. Oh, do you feel the breeze from the Segway? Isn't it delicious? Marilyn Monroe, Elizabeth Taylor, Betty Davis. These Hollywood legends defined glamour. On that list is Meryl Oberon. She was just as glamorous, just as famous, and she was Māori. Or was she? No, I'm not. Up to now, he's been after me. Now I'm going after him. And instead of playing exotic roles, she was playing these white roles. <laughs> and the reason for the sudden courage is because Saunders is short-sighted and you think you're safe. One's never safe in a case like this. And why take it on? Because I hope that you will marry me when you are free. At a time when, if anybody had discovered that she was um, at all brown or at all indigenous, um, they would have run her out of town and run her off the screen. One of Oberon's biggest fans is acclaimed Māori writer Witsi Ihimaira. When he read her biography in 1990, he was surprised to discover the whakapapa of one of Hollywood's first female stars. Around about page seven, it mentioned that um, she had had Māori ancestry. Well, you know, just absolutely, totally blew me away. But the whole idea that a Māori had conquered Hollywood because she was regarded as being one of the most beautiful and most influential um, actresses of her time. You look so incredibly young. Not a fact, I don't feel old at all. And that is uh, one of those reasons why we should remember her here in New Zealand, because she made it uh, at a time when such uh, an opportunity was totally out of the question. But is there anything wrong in what we do? If she had acknowledged that she had any touch of the tar, they used to call it in those days, um, then her whole career, her whole life, would have been totally destroyed. Ihimaira says Oberon went to extreme lengths to hide her ethnic features. Of course, she had an advantage, and that is, in those days, they only made their films in, in black and white, so people wouldn't have known that she uh, was a woman of colour. And Greg Toland, who became her husband, um, he was a cameraman, and he developed a way of flooding her face with bright, bright light so that it looked entirely as if it was a white face. Oberon was born in India in 1911. She was cast in her first film when she moved to London at 17. By the time she reached Hollywood, Oberon made up her past to conceal her true identity. I don't deserve such fortune. Thank you, sir. But as I understand it, it is you who have the fortune. She <laughs> said she was born in Tasmania, and it, it, that was so far away from Hollywood. I mean, Tasmania in those days, nobody would really sort of think about it. So it was sort of exotic Tasmania. Oh, Tasmania, Australia. And then later in life, the mayor of Tasmania wanted to present her with a citation and then found out, of course, that, hello, she wasn't born here at all. This is the Architectural Digest book I was telling you about. New Zealand's own Mr Hollywood and gossip columnist David Hartnell met Oberon when she visited Auckland in 1977. She was a star through and through. She knew exactly what was what. We talked about the old... Well, we couldn't say the old in those days to her because she was still a star, so you never say the old days of Hollywood. We talked about the glamour days of, of, of Hollywood. When you met her, did you get a sense that she was Māori? Not at her? all. Not at all, no. She could have been from anywhere in the world. She was just exotic. Please find another business. There is no other business. The mystery behind Oberon's past has resurfaced. The Last Tycoon, a new TV show based on old Hollywood, has a character inspired by Oberon's life. Wait till they see you on screen. A recent Vanity Fair article about the show emphasised Oberon's Māori ancestry. Have you done any research about what Meryl's Māori ancestry is, where she comes from, what her iwi is? I tried. All I know is that she was a Selby. Whether or not her mother uh, met um, 
a Mr. Selby in India or in New Zealand. Uh, I don't know. Oberon was raised believing her grandmother, Charlotte Selby, was her mother. Her biological mother, Constance, was only 12 years old when she gave birth. Oberon discovered the truth in her later years. If we can find out who Charlotte Constance Selby was, then we will find out where that ancestry comes from. Ihimaira says Oberon was so committed to keeping her secret that she denied the true relationship with her mother. What may I help you with, Mrs? This is very simple. For those who have read Ihimaira's book and watched the film White Lies, the relationship between Oberon and her mother might sound familiar. They inspired two of the story's main characters. Uh, Paraiti is asked to do a bit of business for Mrs Vickers, whom she thinks is a white woman. Uh, but Mrs Vickers actually happens to be a Māori woman and she's having a baby. If the baby is born brown, then her husband will discover that she is Māori and he will throw her out. And she has a maid, a Māori maid, and that Māori maid uh, is part of that whole deception. Kia ora, Peter. How are you? Peter Kraft has been a genealogist for more than 30 years. He's assisting our search for Oberon's heritage. So far, he's had little luck. On the surface, I can't see where you're going to find Mary ancestry in that line. Because you're going backwards in time, and if her mother was born in 1870 or something like that, I'm going to ask you, how many Maoris were there in Sri Lanka in 1870? Peter, what we have here is Mel Oberon's baptism records from 1911. That's right. Is that right? Yep. From a church in Bombay. It's like doing a jigsaw. I've got one piece so far, and I don't really know what the picture looks like. In his professional opinion, Kraft doubts Oberon has any Māori blood. He says it may be a lie she told for publicity. She may well have said it herself because she wanted to explain sort of the slightly dark complexion. Oh, I know that every second's important. Mm -hmm. Have a bath, please. But both Hartnell and Ihimaira agree the Hollywood legend could be Māori. We'd trust luck to come around again sometime. So I'm 50-50, but I hope she has. Why is that? Well, because then we can class her as a little bit of our own. If her being Māori is not true, where do you think it came from? But, I, but it is true. Uh, it, it isn't Merle who told that story herself. Her biographers told that story. I like to think that Merle Oberon was a Māori. I'd like to think that Merle Oberon was a Ngāti Pro. Oberon died in 1979. She's a woman who kept many secrets, but she has taken this mystery to her grave. Such a stunning woman, huh? After the break, we remember the shocking police raids in Te Urewera 10 years on. <laughs>